My early childhood was spent mainly on the west side of Detroit. Um, I was reared by my mother, divorced a woman. I lived in a segregated, although predominantly black neighborhood, and the schools that I attended uh, in early childhood were segregated as well, actually all the way through school. It surprised me and disappointed me that people couldn't do the same thing, but we all lived in the same country and under the same constitution and declaration of independence. My mother had had her share of experiences with racial injustices uh, when she was an entertainer in her travels. In those early days, in those travels, she would often experience, or sometimes I won't say often, but experience having to enter a hotel or a theater uh, in, in the rear entrance and uh, drink from separate fountains and things like that. I only learned of that, though, um, at the August 28th march. And it's because of what was going on that compelled her to want to go. She understood the problem. I was in junior high, um, so there was some um, understanding, a relatively thorough understanding of what was going on. But to be in such a huge crowd, that was pretty overwhelming for someone just under five feet tall. Dr. King's voice, um, just hearing him speak, it was piercing. It was, it was like being at a revival because they were singing and, and a lot of people. And then there was this reverend. He was Reverend King, not just Dr. King. So that was significant to me, and that's what I remember the most. And, and it wasn't so much what he said, it was just everything that he said. It made me feel proud because I had just heard him just a few months before. I knew what Dr. King represented to not just the black community, but to the world. And because he was a, a reverend, a pastor, and that's really how I looked at him and viewed him, having been raised in church, I respected and accepted what he said, the credibility that came with him as a, a minister, as a reverend, just, uh, it was more resounding and, and honest. I learned of that photograph four years ago, and I learned also that it was me. Well, it was actually discovered by my cousin. She phoned and said, Edith, your picture is on a black history calendar with Dr. King and Sojourner Truth and Frederick Douglass and all these great, well-known people. And I, of course, thought she was joking. Um, and she wasn't. I saw it on the website, and lo and behold, there's my face. It was the first time that I had attended something with so many people that also happened to be my 12th birthday that day. So I must say that it's overwhelming, and because I'm a civil rights activist and have been for most of my, all of my adult life and, and most of my childhood, um, advocating for what I believed in, it served for me as a confirmation that that's what I was destined to do. It, I would say, inspired me to want to do more. My mother inspired me to want to do more to, to ensure that the civil injustices that people were experiencing, they wouldn't experience them, and I still do that today. Each one of us has a responsibility that goes beyond the third Monday in January when we recognize Dr. King's birthday. And the best way to honor him and his legacy is to do something every day to make life better.